एट वेरी हाई लेवल जेसन इज जस्ट अ की वैल्यू पेयर रैप्ड इन डबल कोट्स एंड दीज की वैल्यू पेयर्स आर सेपरेटेड यूजिंग कॉमा कैरेक्टर एंड दिस सेट ऑफ की वैल्यू पेयर्स कैन बी रिप्रेजेंटेड एज अ लॉन्ग स्ट्रीम देन हाउ इट इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम सी एस पी फाइल्स वाई देर इज अ नीड टू स्टोर डेटा इन जेसन वेन सी एस पी फाइल लुक सो सिंपल एंड इजी टू प्रोसेस बाई ह्यूमन माइंड इज जेसन फास्टर और फ्लेक्सीबल कंपेयर टू सी एस पी फाइल्स और सी एस पी डेटा फाइल्स आर चीपर टू प्रोसेस वी नेवर टॉक अबाउट वैलिड सी एस पी फाइल्स बट वी टॉक अबाउट वैलिड जेसन वॉट डज वैलिड जेसन मीन वेन वी से स्नो फ्लेक हैज नेटिव सपोर्ट फॉर जेसन एंड रिच सपोर्ट फॉर जेसन प्रोसेसिंग वॉट डज इट मीन एंड हाउ दिस इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम हैंडलिंग सिंपल स्ट्रिंग प्रोसेसिंग और स्ट्रिंग पार्सिंग एप्लीकेशन और ए पी आई डेवलपर्स ट्रीट जेसन फाइल इन अ वेरी डिफरेंट वे एंड एज अ डेटा इंजीनियर वी मस्ट नो एंड एजुकेट वॉट इज जेसन एंड वाई सच फाइल्स आर कॉल्ड ऑब्जेक्ट नोटेशन देन जस्ट अ सिंपल डेटा फाइल एंड एवरीथिंग अबाउट जेसन प्रोसेसिंग इन स्नो फ्लेक एंड लेवरेज द पावर ऑफ स्नो फ्लेक फीचर्स टू बिकम मोर एफिशियंट डेटा डेवलपर्स सो दिस वीडियो and this playlist and the master class is all about json processing in snowflake welcome back to my channel data engineering simplified and to this handling json data in snowflake playlist for true data professionals like you this chapter 1 and this playlist has lot to offer and you would learn everything about snowflake's native support for json starting from ingestion to parsing to processing including best practices and different design patterns if there is any specific topic or a sub topic you would like to learn about json and snowflake you can pause the video check this stream app and go to the description below for that specific chapter or specific sub topic this is a complete playlist or a master class to cover json handling in snowflake we will start with introduction and understand the variant data type in snowflake by having different examples and consider different json files and data type support by snowflake compute engine and extension provided by snowflake next chapter will focus on loading json data files using web ui be it legacy or be it snow site snow sql cli aws s3 and using external tables then we will move to next chapter to explore how to parse json and query json data with simple to complex json examples we will also see how json and change data capture works in snowflake using stream object and understand that design pattern we will also understand how to load json data using copy command and using snowpipe object and its behavior and try to elaborate this design pattern we will move to flatten function and its role while processing data in snowflake very very important topic and one of the most powerful function provided by snowflake to simplify your day to day job we will also see the role of file formats while loading data and how this file format helps with different type of json files and role of different properties within the file format then we will move to handle multiple line json objects one of the design pattern which we commonly see and observe we will also elaborate and understand the processing complexity when it comes to nested json and deep nested json and how to convert them into a tabular format we will also cover different json function provided by snowflake for processing for validation and for parsing json data or a file they might be used across different chapters as applicable Finally we will also cover the best practices applied when handling json file be it large or small in snowflake if applicable each chapter in this playlist or in this master class will also show the loading and processing performance by consuming large json data files the warehouse behavior the query profile screen to build a deeper understanding and again refer the link below in the description section to jump to a specific chapter or a sub topic if that interests you more and refer the description section to find the sql script and data file used in this chapter as well as in this entire playlist so let's start with chapter 1 let's start with the brief history of json so it will be easy to understand 
why data engineers have to deal with it and what we need to know and understand about it so we can bring proficiency handling such data files. JSON was initially created by a person named Douglas Crockford in his company named State Software in 2000 and 2001. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation and is a language independent data format. JSON files use the .json file extension. JSON is built on two structure, key value pair or ordered list. Key value pair or also sometimes called name value pair kind of a JSON enclosed in curly bracket and the ordered list is enclosed in a standard bracket. Both are valid JSON object. In general, in data engineering world, we deal more with a key value or a name value pair JSON file than the ordered list. Let's quickly talk about JSON syntax rules. So if it is failing, you can understand why it is not being processed and how to validate its structure. JSON syntax is derived from JavaScript object notation syntax and here are the rules and we are primarily talking about key value kind of a JSON files. JSON data is written as a key value pair or also referred as a name value pair. A name value pair consists of a field name in double quotes followed by a colon character followed by a value. In this example, ID, name, last name, date of birth, which are in double quotes and left side of the colon character are the keys. The right side of the colon are the values. So employee ID is 1001, employee name is Robert, employee last name is Farlin, employee date of birth is 1st January 1980. Now employee has multiple phone number as per this example and it is a collection of two phone numbers means more than one entry for the key phone. So this has to be enclosed within a standard bracket and every element in it will be enclosed in double quotes and individual element will be separated with a comma character. If we move further, address is a nested JSON object which has three elements, street, city and state. And since it is not a collection or a list, it is treated as an object. It has to be enclosed with curly bracket and each element is assigned a key value pair and will follow the same rule of double quote, colon and comma for separating individual element. Now, if we look into the entire employee JSON object at a root of it, the key is employee and the value is a big string having key value pairs or name value pairs. And a JSON object can enclose another JSON object and so on. And that's why sometimes it becomes so complex to understand a JSON structure. There are many tools available which will help you to visualize the entire complex JSON structure. And if you would like to visualize the root element, individual element, this is how it will look like. You can pause the video and look elements which are parent element and contain individual values like ID, name, last name, date of birth and collection elements like a phone number or object inside object like address. If we extend the same JSON file having more than one employee under the employee root element, it looks like this. Here employees is a collection and appearing in orange color. All the objects like address others are appearing in blue color. You can again pause the video and try to understand JSON file as a text versus JSON file which is visualized in a tool. If you would like to know which visual tool I am using, please drop a note in my Instagram account. If we try to visualize the same employee JSON data into CSV style or a CSV format, it may look like this. To accommodate employee data set, we may need three CSV files, employee CSV file, phone CSV file and address CSV file. And once the data is fed into the system, we need to build a relationship to make sure that we have a consistency among all the CSV datasets. Now, if you can see why JSON file is more meaningful in some cases compared to CSV file, there is another advantage of JSON file. Alongside the deep structure and the nested structure, JSON file also supports data type, which we will understand later part of this video. JSON is not just a collection of key value pair or a name value pair. 
but it also supports data type for value text. If you look into this example, any compute engine or a processor which can parse and understand JSON data automatically typecast the values into appropriate data type, very similar to our programming languages. If you pay attention to this example, employee name John is a string data type as it is enclosed with the double quote. Employee's age is 30, it is not wrapped in double quotes, so it will be automatically typecasted into int data type by the compute engine. Employee's height is 5.11 and it is not wrapped in double quotes, so it will automatically be typecasted to decimal data type. Employee's marital status is true and true is not wrapped in double quote, so it is not a pure text and it will be automatically typecasted into boolean data type. Employees has kids will also work like this and if you look into the visual diagram, the true and false are coming in a different colors. The JSON also expect null values. So in this example, employee does not have any stock option and hence it is marked as null. Phone number is a collection. So they are enclosed in a standard bracket and the address is another JSON object inside the employee's JSON object. So object enclosed inside another object and it can go deeper. Now we know how the JSON is a different from a CSV file and other data files and what rule does it follow when it comes to structuring the data as well as data type. If these rules are not followed, that JSON files are treated as invalid JSON. One important point to note, JSON does not support date, time and timestamp data types and they will be treated as a plain string. And we will see if Snowflake can identify these date and time data types while processing the JSON string. So when Snowflake says that it has a native support for a JSON file, it means it can validate JSON objects, understand nesting and deep nesting, understand object versus ordered list structure, understand data types within the JSON file or string, parse and query it similar to a table structure with special notations and function. So we have understood the structure and the rule associated with a JSON file. Let's understand the variant data type and its role in Snowflake when it comes to JSON objects. So if you have an employee table with the different employee attributes, we create DDL statements like this and all the employee attributes are mapped to their respective data type. What if you have the employee object wrapped in a JSON object, how the table structure should look like? For that, Snowflake has a data type called variant and this is how the syntax looks like. On surface, it looks more like a string or a varchar data type, but it is not. So let's create an employee table and insert a JSON object into it and see them in action. So I am in my Snowflake SnowSite web UI so let's create a table called JSON table with only one column called JSON column of data type variant. So my table is created successfully. Let's try to describe the table. And it brings a result JSON column of type variant. Looks good. Now let's try to insert a record which is of type JSON and see whether it allows to insert the record or not. And before I insert the record, Let's try to validate whether it is a valid JSON or not. So I can see it's a valid JSON with two keys, first name and employee ID, John and 1001. Okay, let's go back to our Snow site. Let's run this insert statement. It ended saying expression type does not match the column data type expecting variant, but got a varchar of size 34. So it is not possible to insert a row into variant using direct insert statement. It has to be a select statement and let's try that out. This also ends with the same error. The above function also does not work and we have to use a function called parse JSON. Before I really run this insert statement, let me run this parse JSON and see what kind of data type does it return. So I have got exactly the same result on my screen. However, when you hover this particular section, the return by the parse JSON is a variant type. It means if the parse JSON is used as a part of a select statement, it will allow the insert statement. Okay, let's try that. And if you're not sure what data type it is, you can use a function called 
type of let's run this sql statement now it is giving an object okay good now let me run this insert statement having a select statement with a function pass json now this time one record got inserted successfully let me run the select statement now you can see my json data is available however one thing to notice here on this line number 15 the first element is first name and the second element is employee id when we perform the select statement employee id appeared first followed by the first name it means how the keys will be ordered within the json is not guaranteed if i have to insert multiple json record into a variant column i have to follow this approach where my statement should look like this select parse json column one from values and then i can give multiple values and let's try this approach before that let me delete the existing data set so it says that five rows inserted. Let me run the select statement. This is how the result looks like. All good. And all of them are variant data type. Okay. And again, here employee ID is coming first, followed by the first name. So the order of the keys are not maintained here. So it is not easy to insert JSON data. And we are going to see how we can load large and complex JSON record into the snowflake table in a future chapters now let me delete this record once again now i'm going to insert another complex json string and before i insert let me see how does it look like so this is how this object looks like so i have this employee as a root element here i have a phone which has two different phone numbers i have address another nested object and this address has a street city and state employee has direct element name age height married has kids and stock option and this is how the overall json structure looks like let's go back to snow site and try to insert this json string so one row inserted and this is how this entire json data looks like as a part of a single variant column when you hover here it clearly says that the object type is a variant and since it is a valid JSON, it got inserted into the system without any issue. Now let me make some changes and in case if I remove this double code and try to re-execute this statement, let's see what happens. And it clearly says this parsing of JSON failed due to unterminated string. If I remove this colon character and let me try to run this. Again, it ended with parsing error and it says misplaced curly braces. Okay. So if your JSON is not a valid JSON, then Snowflake is intelligent enough to tell you that this JSON is not a valid JSON and it cannot be inserted into a variant column. We have seen how to insert data into a table that has a variant column and semi structured data type is JSON. Now we will understand how to access these individual element from the variant column which has the JSON object. Let me create a table called employee table and it has a variant column employee underscore JSON. The table is created successfully. Now I am going to insert one single record of an employee and this is how it looks like. And before I insert the record, how this JSON appears when we try to see it in a visual form. If you look into the JSON, it's a valid JSON. There is no root element. All the elements are available next to each other like name, age, height, married, has kids and stock options. There are different data types. This is a varchar or a string, integer, decimal, boolean. This is also boolean and stock option is having a null. Let's insert this JSON string. So this is the insert statement where I'm using the parse JSON my query got executed successfully now let's run this select statement this is how this record looks like good and if you look into this json object only the name key is having a value john which is in double code all other values are not in double quotes it means that snowflake has understood the different data type and accordingly converted into the respective data type as per actual data values Select star from the employee table, bring the entire JSON object as a JSON structure. So if I have to access individual element, name, age, etc., 
I have to use a colon notation and this is how it has to be used. The employee JSON is the name of the column followed by colon character and followed by the key. Here I have a name, age, height in feet, married, has kids and option. These are the keys and these keys should be right after the colon character. Let me run this select statement. So the name of the column is matching exactly the way I have written my select clause and the John is coming double quote. All other column values do not have any double quote. And if you look into this stock option, it is coming null. So using the colon character, I can access individual element. Now let's try to make some minor changes. Instead of colon, if I try to give dot notation, let's see what happens. So it says invalid identifier because right after the column name, it has to be colon. No other characters are allowed. Reverting. Now in place of name in all lower cases, and if I just capitalize the letter N, let's see what happens. JSON did not say that this key is not available. However, it did not find any entry into the JSON object and eventually it returned null object. It's a very important thing to remember. The keys in JSON file is a case sensitive. So you have to make sure that you use exactly the same key as you have used in your JSON file. Let me revert this. Now, if I give double quote around the particular key, let's see what happens. The double quote is still works. If you have a key which is having a spaces, double quote is the good approach to access that element. Now I would like to give the alias name to each of this column. I can follow this approach having a as keyword, then I can give the logical name for that column. Let's run this query. All the columns are coming appropriately. Okay. If you want your column name should be case sensitive, then you have to wrap them in a double code the way I have done it here. Okay. So this is how you can use alias to make sure that your column names are matching to your business need. You can also reorder your column as per your need. There is no restrictions. Let me run this query. Okay. Perfectly fine. Now let's use type of function to check how Snowflake treat these different name value pairs. So if you look into the syntax, I'm using this type of function and this function is taking element from the JSON object. Now let me run this SQL statement. So the name is a varchar, age is integer, height is decimal, is married is boolean, has kids is boolean, is stock options null values, very interesting, okay. So this is how this data set looks like. Now, once you know how Snowflake has translated these different values from your JSON, you can explicitly typecast to make sure that we do not have any problem while using a further transformation in your ETL pipeline. And if I have to explicit typecast age to integer or name to varchar, I have to use double colon notation and I can give a string, a string and I can give here integer. And let's see what happens. Let me rerun this. And if I click on this particular value, if you notice into this result section, it is indicating this is a fixed length integer. If I click here, it is a text. If I click here, it is again a fixed length. Okay. However, when I click on this, it is still showing as a variant because all the values written from the JSON object is automatically converted into a variant and you have to use a double colon notation to typecast to a specific data type. Now let's insert little complex JSON structure and try to see how to access sub element. Let me delete all the data from employee table quickly. I'm going to insert this complex JSON object. And before that, I would like to visualize this. So employee is my root element. An employee has a direct children called name, age, height, married, has kids, stock option. And they are directly coming in this box. Employee has two phone numbers. So it is a collection because it is wrapped in a standard bracket. And here you can see in this orange color phone. And phone has two elements, index zero and index one. And employee has another object element which is named address and pay attention to this address text it is start with capitalized a and this address has three sub element street city 
and state and this is how the relationship looks like so employee has one address and address has three different elements good let me insert this single record let's run this select a star from the employee table and this is how the data looks like this is my root element and root element has all other child elements now this is the query if I have to access the immediate element and all the sub element mp underscore json is your column name in the employee underscore tbl and then employee is my root element so I am accessing the root element through the colon notation and all other elements within this root element is accessed through the dot notation okay and so name age height in feet married has kids stock options are all accessed directly through the dot notation and then I have a phone number which is a ordered list so I can access by giving alias name called all phone and then if I have to access individual element from the phone then I can start with index 0 index 1 or I can also go to index 2 and index 3 if those elements are available then it is coming to the address address is another JSON object or sub object within the main JSON object and I can access address and here I have intentionally given the lowercase just to simulate whether it brings any data or it brings null. And if I have to access sub element from this address object, I have to give address dot street, address dot city and address dot state. Let me run this query. So the name age height is married has kids stock option has brought the appropriate result. And if you look into all phone, it is a collection so here it is also returning a variant type and individual phone number has appeared here or address sub elements are coming null because it is a case sensitive let me fix it now i can see the address is visible street city and state all the values are visible correctly so no matter how deep your json is you can always use colon notation and the dot notation to access that now one interesting thing I would like to show you if I use a colon here or if I use a colon here and colon here let's see whether they bring result or not they are still bringing the same result so colon or a dot can be interchangeably used specifically when you are accessing the sub element but not for the root element now let's use the function type of and see what kind of object the phone and address is so all phone type is an array type and address type is another object type within the entire JSON object okay so this is how you can validate using type of function to understand what kind of object is within your JSON object and accordingly you can use either a index based access pattern or you can use dot access pattern to access the sub element within the JSON file. If Snowflake has a native support for a JSON it does the typecasting automatically based on the JSON file so if you would like to perform any kind of mathematical operation you can certainly do that so for example in this query I am converting the height in feet into height in centimeter and applying the mathematical operation directly on the result which is coming from this colon and dot notation and here I am applying array size to understand how many phone numbers each employee has okay let me run this query and you can see here it says this is an array type since it is array type I can apply the array size and it has clearly returned that this array has two element on the other side this height in centimeter has converted my feet value into the centimeter value in case if you have made a mistake and typed incorrect key then what happens it should not fail yes it is not failing so it is returning null value you don't have to worry about key not found error or column not found error because json allows you to infer the schema during the read time so this is one of the advantage of having and processing the JSON file. If you have to summarize what we have seen about access pattern when dealing with variant column, we start with a variant column name. In this case, it is emp underscore JSON followed by a colon character, which is must. Then we give element name 
and in this case employee is our root element in this json file and to access any child element under the parent element we can use either colon or a dot notation and the key text like name or age the key text is a case sensitive so since it is a case sensitive if you use uppercase or a lowercase and does not match with your json key value then you would end up with the null values as a output if you have a collection object as a value like a phone number in this example we have to use indexed like 0 or a 1 to access the individual element within the collection object if we have another object like address in this example we have to use colon or a dot notation to access the child element you can pause the screen and try to understand how we can access different kind of a data within a json object if you look into this example where I am using a dot notation to access the child element and as well as we are having explicit typecasting using double colon notation. So don't get confused that we have to use only the colon notation to access child element. It can also be accessed through the dot notation. We know JSON does not support date and timestamp. However, we would like to experiment and see whether Snowflake extension support date and timestamp even though they come in a string format. Let's run this select statement. So this is my current date and current timestamp. This is my JSON string, which has a two additional key, date of birth and date of birth timestamp. Let's see whether it is a valid JSON or not. So this is not a valid JSON. It needs to be fixed. So I am going to use this invalid JSON and try to see how Snowflake behaves. So I'm inserting this one single record. It is clearly indicating that this numeric literal value is not valid. So let me fix this. And let's see whether it recognizes timestamp or not. This is ended with the same error. Now let's try to run the insert statement. One record got inserted successfully. Now let's run the select SQL statement. So this is how my JSON data looks like within the variant column. Now I am running this employee JSON date of birth and type of employee JSON date of birth. And here it is date of birth followed by timestamp. Even though I have a date and timestamp as a value, Snowflake has not recognized as a date and timestamp and it is returning as a string or a varchar. Now if I have to fix this issue, then I have to typecast them explicitly using a double colon character. And this is how it looks like. I am specifying the date of birth and I am typecasting it to the date. And here it is date of birth underscore timestamp and typecasting it into the timestamp. Now, when I click on this, it says it is a timestamp. And when I click on this, it is also says date. Okay. So if your JSON file is having a date, and a timestamp, the Snowflake does not support an explicit conversion of those data type. You have to use this explicit conversion and ensure that your columns are representing the right data type for the value from the JSON object. Let's move next. In real life project, you will have to translate your JSON structure into a tabular format as it is shown in this example. So if you have an employee JSON data, you would prefer to convert those employee JSON data and flatten it into three different tables. If we take this example where each employee has their personal detail, they have one or more phone number and they have one address. You would extract the JSON data and put those JSON data into respective table or more like a tabular structure. If we have to achieve this, how we can do that? Let's quickly jump into our snow site and see that. I'm going to create a fresh employee table and trying to insert a couple of JSON record. So my table is created successfully and I'm going to insert this record. Let's validate whether it is a valid JSON record or not. This is how my JSON looks like. One addition on line number nine is email address. It has multiple phone numbers and one address object. And you can pause the screen and understand the structure here. Let me insert the first record. It got inserted successfully. I am going to insert another record with name John2 and here the email address is also different. Let's run the select statement. I can see I have two data set. 
Now let's try to access each element from the employee table. And this is how the query looks like. I am using colon notation right after the employee JSON column. And then I'm using a dot notation to extract individual element. And I'm using double colon notation to typecast the data into a string. I have not done for all the fields. Wherever I feel that it is a varchar, I am explicitly using double colon notation. Phone number, I am accessing the phone number with zero first element. And for address, I am using address followed by dot notation followed by sub element. Let's run this query. So it has given me all the data set. Email is still having double code. So let's convert it. Everything looks good. Now I am going to create three sequence object. And if you have not seen this particular chapter from my other playlist, I request you to go and understand different type of object in Snowflake. Each of this table will have a primary key and their relationship would be built based on the foreign key. And for that, I am using a sequence object to generate the incremental number. So this is my employee sequence, which is start with one and it will increment by one. Phone sequence, it will also start with one, increment by one. And this is my address sequence. So all the three sequence objects are created. Now I'm going to create a table called employee master and using this sequence object as a auto generated number. It has name, age, height in centimeter, is married, has kids, stock option and email. Let me create this table. So my table is created successfully. Now I'm going to create a table called employee phones, which is having a primary key and that primary key is using a phone sequence and it is having a reference to the employee master table with FK and phone type and phone number. So this table is created successfully. Now I am going to create employee address table, exactly the same thing. It is using the address sequence for generating a primary key. It is having a reference to the employee master table and it has a street address, city and state. So all these three tables are created and now let's see how the insert statement looks like. So if you look into this insert statement, since I have a two employee data set, let's run this select query first. It is giving me name, age, height in centimeter and other parameter looks good. And since the first employee does not have any stock option, it is coming as a null. Second employee has 10 stock, so it is coming as a 10. Now this is a standard insert operation and if you notice, I am not using a primary key because it will be auto generated using the default keyword. Now let's run this select query. And I can see my PK is generated and all the details are available. Now, if I have to insert the data into the phone table, having a reference of a primary key, this is how my query looks like. So I am running a union query where I am joining my employee table, which is holding a variant data type along with my employee master. And I am comparing my email versus email because email is a unique within the organization. Okay. And let me run this particular select statement before I execute the entire insert statement. So it is giving me employee PK one employee PK two and the phone number looks good. So I am going to run this insert statement. You can pause the screen and try to understand how this SQL is constructed. So total four record got inserted. Each employee has two phone numbers. And if you look, this is a hard coded value on line number 116, where it is accessing the first phone zeroth index. And that is a home phone. And in the second part of the union clause, I have the first element from the phone collection. And that is marked as a work phone. Good. Now let's see the data. PK is generated, reference is also available and phone type home phone, home phone, work phone and work phone looks good. Now next I am going to run a insert statement which will insert data in employee address. This is relatively straightforward. However, it is also using a join query based on the email which is a unique identifier between these two tables. 
and it also inserted two address records. Let me run this query. Now I can see my address got a primary key. It is having a reference to employee master table with FK and all other details are available. Good. Now my data is available in structure format and I can simply run a join query to fetch all the data set. For a simplicity, I am just joining employee table and address table based on this PK and FK relationship. This is how my data looks like. Good. I can also go and check this data from my data tab. So this is my employee master table. All the values are available. This is my address table. All the values are available. And this is my phone table where all the phone numbers are available. So if you look into this insert statement, they look little complex, right? And that's why Snowflake has many other functions which we are going to cover in future chapters, how you can really simplify this insert statement. JSON data is everywhere, be it IoT device data use case or clickstream data use cases like Google Analytics or Adobe Analytics, SaaS API use cases like ServiceNow or Salesforce, social media data like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube or Instagram. They all produce data in humongous scale and only format through which these data set can be consumed is JSON. We have only scratched the surface of JSON and this is only the tip of the iceberg. There is a lot more to learn about JSON and Snowflake and all future chapters will cover it in this playlist. Right. And what all we are going to cover? For example, loading JSON data at scale, processing them at scale, use right functions to transform and flatten JSON objects, processing new line and different kind of a JSON files, copy command and delta load pattern with JSON in Snowflake, deduplication and other parameter in the file format, best practices and the limitation of variant data type with respect to JSON. The list is big. So if you want to master the JSON processing in Snowflake, watch the entire playlist. We have seen the fundamental of JSON data loading via SnowSight using insert statement in this chapter. Our next few chapters will primarily focus on large scale data loading using S3 buckets, web UI and SnowSQL. Continue to watch this space and also explore my other playlist which covers wide variety of topics in Snowflake. Thank you for watching. Keep learning and keep growing.